Good afternoon and welcome to the Church of St. Matthew as we celebrate this solemn liturgy of Good Friday. There are three main parts to this liturgy. The first part is the Liturgy of the Word, over readings and the Passion of the Lord according to the Evangelist St. John. Then there will be the Solemn Intercessions, Prayers of the Faithful, which are solemnized on this day, Good Friday, and the bishops of the United States have added one of the prayers because we are in this pandemic. The third part of the celebration will be the veneration of the cross, recalling the mystery of Good Friday. You will be able to participate at your homes. Uh, Father Steve will invite you to do that. We are fasting from communion today, both here and I know you are at home. Communion on Good Friday is a late addition liturgically. It only came in in the 1960s, so we will not be celebrating that part of the Good Friday liturgy. I invite you to spend a few moments in silence collecting yourselves as we prepare to celebrate this liturgy of Good Friday. Thank you. Lord, by the suffering of Christ, your Son, you have saved us from the death we inherited from sinful Adam. By the law of nature, we have borne the likeness of his humanity. May the sanctifying power of grace help us to put on the likeness of our Lord in heaven, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance and his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering, accustomed to his infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins. Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. Like a lamb led to slaughter, or a sheep before shearers, he was silent and opened not his mouth. 
Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of the people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken no, any falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. And he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I put my life in your hand. In you, Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. So, son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Word of the Lord. Praise and 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with the disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and the disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often went there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers, together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward. Whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. Whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, threw it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had, who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him 
bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it, and at that moment, the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. We are not permitted to put anyone to death. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. You say that I am a king. For this reason I was born. For this reason I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to me. After he had said this, he went out to the Jews again and told them, Not this man, but Barabbas. And Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the, the Jews. Jews, striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police and saw him, they shouted, Crucify, crucify him. him! Crucify, crucify him. him! Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. We have, we have a, law, a law, and according to, to that, that law, law, he ought he to, to die, die because, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered the, his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do not refuse to speak to me. Do you not know that I have power to release you, power to crucify you? You would have no power over me whatever if it had not been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you release, release this, this man, you are, you are no, no friend, friend of the emperor. emperor. Everyone, Everyone who claims to be a king, king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Here is your king. Away, Away with, with him. him. Away with, with him. him. Crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? We have yeah, no, no king, king but the but emperor. The emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus 
and carrying the cross by himself, went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priest of the Jews who said to Pilate, Do not write king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us, Let us not, not tear it, but, but cast, cast lots for it to see whose it will be. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, handed over his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once, blood and water came out. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus, and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, 
and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray, dear friends, for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God the Almighty Father guide it and gather it together, so that we may worship him in peace and tranquility. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy that your church, spread throughout the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that God, who chose him to be bishop, may give him health and strength to guide and govern God's holy people. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, Look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed the Christian people governed by their maker may grow in merit by reason of their faith. We pray this through the name of Jesus, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for Bernard, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for all who have a special ministry in the church, and for all God's people. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace all may serve you faithfully, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives with you, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism, that God in his mercy make them responsive to his love, forgive their sins through the waters of new birth, and give them life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, 
who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring. Increase the faith and the understanding of catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism they may be added to the number of your adopted children through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our brothers and sisters who share our faith in Jesus Christ, that God may gather and keep together in one church all those who seek the truth with sincerity. Almighty ever-living God, who gathers what is scattered and keeps together what you have gathered, Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God that they may continue to grow in the love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and Sarah and their descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way to salvation. Almighty ever-living God, Grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God, that they may find in God by sincerely following all that is right. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always, by desiring you and by finding you, come to rest, grant we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you the one true God and Father of the human race. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that God may guide their minds and hearts, so that all women and men may live in true peace and freedom. Almighty, ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, Look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religion, may through your gift be made secure. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, 
and salvation to all the victims who have died. Almighty ever-living God, only support of our human weakness, look with compassion upon the sorrowful, the sorrowful condition of your children who suffer because of this pandemic. Relieve the pain of the sick. Give strength to those who care for them. Welcome into your peace those who have died, and throughout this time of tribulation, grant that we may all find comfort in your merciful love. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dear friends, that God the Almighty Father may heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and rid the world of falsehood, hunger, and disease. Almighty ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is the wood of the cross on which has hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. Come, let, let us, us worship. This is the wood of the cross on which hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship. Come, let us worship.
I invite you in your homes to take your crucifix and spend a moment of time reverencing it, and then pass it to the next person and allow that person to spend a moment of time doing the same. Almighty and eternal God, you have restored us to life by the triumphant death and resurrection of Christ. Continue this healing work within us. May we who participate in this mystery never cease to serve you. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord, who lives with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. With the realization of the pandemic in which we are now living, please join me in praying for all who are involved. Dear Creator of the world, we come before you asking your mercy on us to halt the spread of the coronavirus. We pray for those infected, May they receive prompt and effective medical care that will restore them to health. We ask your protection for all medical professionals. Shield, strengthen, and guide them. We pray for those most vulnerable to this virus. With your outstretched arm and mighty hand, protect. We pray for those who are quarantined. May your presence bring them comfort. We pray for public health care leaders and for government agencies. May they be informed and prepared. Give them the resources they need. We pray for those seeking treatments 
cures, and vaccines. Guide them, and by the power of your Spirit, grant them success. We pray for those whose lives and livelihood are disrupted. Sustain them and give them hope. Draw us closer to you. Give us compassion for each other. Send your healing spirit among us and grant us peace. Amen. Lord, send down your abundant blessing upon your people who have devotedly recalled the death of your Son in the sure hope of resurrection. Grant them pardon, bring them comfort, may their faith grow stronger, and their eternal salvation be assured. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen.